Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I'm going to talk about a topic that was requested a lot about blending families and specifically how to incorporate your partner into your life with your small children or children that are still in the home. Um, and before we dive into that episode, then I want to obviously tell you to subscribe as usual. I just recorded one on men who can't trust, so that is very useful to many, and attachment theory, boundaries, uh, communication. There's just so many of them by now. So hopefully, end of uh, Mr. Perfect and his crazy wife. Oh, and the oral sex on women. That's always a big one. Um, so anyhow, let's uh, go back to blended families. So, um, they're obviously based on the age of your child, it's going to be more or less easy to incorporate your new partner into, um, your life. Younger kids, like very young kids aren't even going to remember time before your partner. If they're like toddlers, et cetera, preschoolers, um, preschoolers will remember time before your partner, but they can bond very readily. Teenagers, um, uh, bond less readily <laughs> to, uh, just cause they're harder with everything. So it's very different introducing, and I'm not even talking about introducing, like I'll link to my post on how to introduce your partner, your new partner to your kids, but I'm talking about like when you're living together. So you're really incorporating them into your life and how that goes. Um, so little kids, like real little kids will just even like, you know, be physically like hugging and cuddling and talking and everything to any loving adult. Whereas a teenager, um, may feel very loyal to the other parent and, um, therefore be more difficult. And they also have more problems in general with everybody. And so they're more irritable phase and less dependent on the family of origin for any sort of need to be met. So, um, in, you know, kids that are in between are going to be in between, you know, like real little kids will be easier than, than old, than older kids. We will be easier than teenagers who also, although not relevant to this podcast will be easier probably than young adults because, um, I work with a lot of people who, um, their parents remarry later, like when they're already an adult, their parents get divorced and then remarry. And some people have a relationship with these step parents, but many people don't even really consider them step parents at all, except like legally because they are an adult. So this is basically like mom or dad's husband slash wife, and they have all sorts of relationships with those people, good bad or indifferent, but they don't really consider this person to be a parent surrogate in any way. So, I mean, first, obviously, you have to think about the way that you are framing this person's addition into your family. Like if you are acting like you do everything for your kids and that your new spouse or your new partner is an add-on, of very little value, then uh, guess what your kids are going to think? You know, like if you want your kids to really bond with your partner and who's going to be their new step parent, or people say bonus parent now, somebody got up my ass for saying step parent. I say step parent. I'm 41 years old. We say step parent. <laughs> I mean, you want to say bonus parent, say bonus parent. My kids got my husband a thing that said bonus dad. That's cool. But you could also say step parent unless somehow that's now going to be a thing that we're not allowed to say. I can't imagine why. But anyhow, I'm going to say step parent. So if you want your kids to bond to your step parent, they have to be integral in the life of the family. And this has to be basically from the time that you start living together, you know, and, uh, which it frequently comes before, you know, you're actually married. So they're like a de facto step parent, not, um, you know, a legal step parent yet. And for some people it happens at the same time, but either way, if your kids depend on their step parent for nothing, 
they don't need them for nothing. They don't bond to them the same way. Like you are their parents, certainly, but if you want your kid to feel like they have now two parents in the home, of course, they still have their other parent. I'm talking about a situation where they do still have their other parent and they go um, back and forth in some sort of way. So your ex is their you know, you know, father slash mother, but now there's like another person in a similar role on the same level to you of parent in the house, then you have to start acting from the beginning like this person is necessary, like they are essential, like they can do stuff for your kid, like that your kid should and can rely on them. So there's a lot of people that kind of overfunction. You should go back to my overfunctioning podcast. And then their new partner, the new step parent, is kind of useless in the home, in a sense, in the parenting aspect. So they kind of keep on operating like they did when they were single. And they do everything for the kids. And the other, uh, you know, adult in the home is kind of not at the level of parent. So if they're not at the level of parent, how are your kids going to think of them as a parent? You know, it's, it's hard because obviously you want to show your kids that you prioritize them and that you love them and, and you, you want to strike a balance. So you don't want to say, oh, look, this person's in here now. So now they're going to discipline you and they're going to do everything same as I do. And disciplining is a, is a different kind of uh, issue, which I'll get to in a few, but you certainly want your partner to be like driving them places and making food for them and helping them with homework and doing all sorts of things that can let them see that they can rely on their step parent and that their step parent loves them. So if you keep doing like everything for your kid and then your partner is just kind of like hanging out, you know, then how is that going to promote any sort of closeness or connection? What you're trying to do, like this person's in in your home, like they're not just um, some guy that you've dated a couple times or some woman you've dated a couple times. This is like a person that's in your home. You're blending families. They are either a legal or soon to be legal or a de facto step parent. So as long as they got that parent moniker, they have to be incorporated in your kids' lives. And now if they have some kind of problem with doing that, then this should not be somebody that you marry or that you're living with. So like if they think that somehow, and this is like no one, but like, I mean, like in in the 1% of situations where somebody's like, fuck this, they're not my kids, you know, I'm not driving them to dance class or whatever, then why are you with that person? Don't be with that person, obviously. Like that's setting everything up to be terrible and your kids are going to feel that uh, distance emanating from this adult who then they're obviously not going to be close to. But in all other situations, when somebody loves you, they love your kids and, or at least they know they have to start to love your kids and are ready and open and willing to do that and hoping that the kids love them back. You know, and mostly they're worried that the kids don't like them versus that they don't like the kids. But of course, the kids can be various levels of difficulty. So uh, the number one thing is to make sure that your partner is taking care of your kids at least as much as you are in a practical way. So you are splitting driving, you are splitting um, buying them taking them to the mall and buying them this thing that they need for tomorrow or like whatever. Because it's just like somebody told me when you have like a puppy, if you want the puppy to bond to you, then you got to be the one to feed the puppy. Well, I mean, (laughs) this is not much different than parenting, right? So like the kid is going to bond to somebody who's seen to be essential. And it's interesting because this is not what anybody wants to replicate, but in a situation where people have told me that they had a parent who had substance abuse or depression or real some sort of real bad issue, and then the person got married to this very stable partner that then this step-parent took care of the child, who then grew into my client, in a way better than the parent ever had, then they end up being closer to the step-parent than to their biological parent because that's who they rely on. So you need to make sure that your child has... um, uh, the all the opportunity is to rely on your partner and then they will really start to feel like they're a parent. And if your partner, let's say, never had kids of their own and so they have low confidence about their ability to do this, just put them into the situations increasingly um, 
like increasingly difficult situations. I say difficult in quotes, but you know, first they can be the one to help with homework. I mean, anybody can do that. And then they can be the one to, you know, drive them to, to, you know, the mall. And then they could then be the one that stays with them for a few hours while you go do something and whatever the case may be. So you're titrating up their involvement in a very instrumental, helpful way. In terms of the discipline that I said I'd get back to, step parents should not be disciplining for like the first few years, really, um, that they know the child because this can go very bad. So if there is any sort of resentment that a child has, and and, and they could also make shit up, your kids like don't don't forget, kids lie. Like I've written about this, <laughs> they don't like because they're bad. They like because they're kids. So if they're already, let's say, feel like uh, daddy left mommy, right? And that's what they think may or may not be true, but that's the story in their head. Now, daddy has this new girlfriend, new girlfriend said, um, uh, you know, don't color on the wall and they color on the wall, uh, just to fuck with her. And then she puts them in time out. Whoa, that's not going to go good. And it's certainly not probably going to be reported like it went down when they come back home to mom, they're going to say this, you know, horrible, witch decided yanked me out of nowhere into my room. And it was, I was there for three hours. Like, stuff like this happens, you know, don't, don't think, (laughs) don't think that anybody's little angel is above lying. These children are feeling stressed and that's what kids do, you know, to make sense of the world. They, they can lie. They can make things up, not because they're bad, but just because kids tend to confabulate, you know, is the um, word for that make shit up. (laughs) So do not ever put your uh, partner in a situation where they are supposed to discipline your child in any but the most uh, broad, like general ways. Like they could say, hey, like be quiet, you know, if like the child is yelling, but they should not be the one who's doing any timeouts or removing any privileges. Because remember, we're trying to make your child bond to them in a good way, not a bad way. Um... So what about teenagers? Teenagers may really kind of stay in their shell and not bond to a step parent as readily as little kids. So if you are trying to have a teenager give like big like hugs and lots of love and affection to a step parent, like you may be barking up the wrong tree. So you're going to have to moderate your expectations all children would be expected to be uh, polite and nice to whoever your partner is or whoever your friend is, honestly, or wherever you go, whatever you do, they're expected to be nice. That's like a normal expectation, but to expect them to be, you know, uh, real loving and and um, uh, emotionally close with a step parent if they only met them as a teenager or a preteen may be asking too much or it may be asking too much too soon. That sort of relationship may develop over time. Don't try to um, ever tell your kids to like say I love you to your partner if they are not ready to. However, on the other end, if you like your partner is supposed to be is supposed to love your kids. I mean, and if they don't, they got to fake it till they make it at first. So like your partner, you can say, Hey, you know what? We've been together. You've been living here. You know, like, I mean, I think before they're living there, they could be saying, I love you to your kids. Love you. Bye. You know, but either way, if it's like at a point you're together for like, you know, a year or something, you could tell your partner, you know, it might be nice. (laughs) Do you, if you feel any love for the kids that you could say, I love you. Or like you could say, like if it's a little kid and your partner is very kind of uh, skittish and anxious about doing anything wrong, you can always say, hey, like, you know, so-and-so likes to hug. Like you could hug her goodbye. Like try to hug her goodbye. Let's see what she does, you know? So if anybody's going to initiate any sort of extra affection, it seems to be good. If the it, Listen, if the kid does it, it's ideal because you know that it's like coming from the heart. But like if, if it's a situation where everybody's very skittish, there's nothing wrong with encouraging your partner to say something like, I think it would be nice like if you gave my daughter, a hug at the end. Let's see what she does. If you put out your arms, if she says no, no, because sometimes kids are very, very um, anxious about being the one to initiate. This would be like with like in a situation where like a kid is, is usually a loving little kid and is starting to kind of follow around the other 
the step parent, but they don't have kind of the courage to initiate physical contact or really to say, I love you, then you could talk to your partner about being the one to be more kind of open in those ways. Or like you could say to your partner, hey, you're going to the store. Why don't you offer to go with your kid, you know, or why don't you offer to do this thing? So that's a good sign is if your partner's super open to listening to your suggestions on how to bond with the children, that is pretty much the only sort of partner that you should be with if you are um, remarrying <laughs> and you have kids is somebody who is willing to listen to you talk about how you could better bond with how they could better bond with your kids. And of course, if in the inverse situation, so if, if you're in a situation where your partner already has kids, then of course, all the things that I'm saying for them to do with your kids, you're also going to try to do with their kids, right? So then you're putting yourself out there more. You're the one who's trying to be really positive. You're the one who's trying to do things that are instrumentally helpful. You're the one who would volunteer to take them, you know, to do whatever it is that they have to do or to help with their homework or to give them a snack or what have you. So you're always trying to kind of show that you are this stable, loving, positive adult. And a a lot of people are big into um, saying things like, I'm not trying to replace your mom or I'm not trying to replace your dad. Like, that's like how I talk in my book, how to talk to your kids about divorce. I say like, don't, like some people say in the divorce talk, like this isn't your fault. Like maybe like, like I don't, I don't even know in what era maybe kids would think that. I feel like, why would you say that? The kids that I see or work with, when I used to work with kids, they didn't think that. <laughs> like, don't say any, don't plant any seeds. You know, I, I know like very few kids who are not the centerpiece of the divorce in that the parents are vying for more and more time with them. So they don't think that they were the people who caused the divorce. So don't plant that seed. Of course, if a kid says, are you divorcing because of me? Of course you say, definitely not. Like you're the best thing that came of this, you know, marriage. We both love you so much. But similarly, like unless a kid literally says, you're not my dad, you don't have to say shit. Like I'm not trying to replace your dad. Like they know, like, and you, the person who has those kids as your biological kids, you can say that privately, like, so-and-so is, is totally not replacing daddy, daddy's your daddy, but, you know, he just loves you, and whatever, whatever, you can say these kind of things, it doesn't really seem, uh, evident, uh, not evident, it doesn't seem, uh, required to say that and sometimes kids will take that the wrong way as though you're saying you're not connected to them like I'm not trying to be your dad because like I don't give a shit you know like so that's not how you may mean it but that may be how it's taken so you don't have to say these extra things unless of course the kid's like you're not my dad then you feel like I'm not trying to be your dad I just love you and I want to be here for you in whatever way that you want to be close so you know things like that so basically blended families can be very difficult to haven't even gotten into siblings that could be hard as well maybe I could do a later podcast on that blow step siblings bonus siblings what have you but the the main point with this is is a simple one but it can't be overstated too much is the person needs to be a positive necessary presence like like it's like if the kid thinks everybody's life is better because this person is here look mommy slash daddy is happier you know and this person helps out a lot and we like do all these fun things together you know like I see a lot of people who um instinctively know this and they end up having good relationships with step siblings not step siblings what am I talking about (laughs) with their step kids like especially women will do this instinctively um like they will almost immediately start to like you know cook more things you know meals and drive the kids more places and volunteer to help them with a diorama or whatever um you know like but men can like hang back a little being skittish I think honestly some of it in today's 
culture is like they don't want to be seen as like doing anything out of line. Like I feel like people really underestimate the amount that like a man is kind of taught like don't touch a kid, don't get close to a kid. You could be considered aggressive, dangerous, God forbid, even even something bad sexually. So like a lot of men keep more distance than necessary in this relationship and act more kind of almost formal for longer, which is why if that is the situation that you're in, then you can definitely tell your partner, your male partner, no. Oh, you, you can, you know, go over. She looks like she, a uh, little, my seven-year-old daughter here looks like she'd like you to put her, you know, to carry her up the stairs to bed. Like she likes that, you know, she likes, you know, to, to play, you know, uh, dress up dolls with you. Like, why don't you sit down and play Barbie? Looks like she wants you to. So, you know, you can try to get in on that and try to make everything easier by smoothing that out. And the more that you talk about how much you love your partner, then the easier it is for your kids to understand that they are important and that they are a good person and that they make you happy. So, in my own situation, like I feel like from the very beginning, the children were saying that I would seem very happy with my husband and that that was that was considered to be a very good thing and that he would come in and that he would help. And I, man, I got no problem asking for help. So <laughs> that's why I feel so confident in making all my podcast episodes about how you should try to ask men for help because I got this one. You know, this one I can do innately because um, I got a lot of shit going on. So I got no problem asking for help. So when the kids um, will come and say, can you do X, Y, Z to me, I'll be like, no, ask John. I can't. And so if you do that enough, <laughs> then the kids start to say, oh, well, look, like half the time she says go there. She must A, really trust him. B, he's really helping <laughs> with shit. So, you know, like their kids aren't stupid. Like they start to understand who is integral to the functioning of the family unit. And so in your new family unit, that's you and your new uh, s- parent, you know, the other step parent there of course they still have their you know your co-parent in some other home you know across town or whatever but the kids start to see oh we are a functional family unit I have two parents here that I can ask for help I have two parents here that play with me I have two parents here that listen to me etc etc and over time then your family unit will be kind of very similar to if they were both of your biological children in an ideal situation and, um, of course, that only happens over time, time, like years, then it will feel like that. It, it can be quicker with a tiny little child, you know, like a tiny little baby in those sorts of situations. They kind of don't know what's going on and they will bond very quickly. But with older children, it can take years, you know, before they feel like that. So the more that the kid sees that the kids see that you love the step parent, you know your partner slash their step parent, the more they see that this person is an integral part of their life and willing and able to help and to do things around the home that they need, and it's somebody that you rely on and trust to help with things. And then the more they're encouraged to be affectionate and to be proactive in um, playing and and saying I love you and saying nice things. Like, don't feel like you should ever um, stand on ceremony and just wait for organically your partner to figure out the right way to talk to your kids. Then you don't want to micromanage, but you want to help them. So, like, if you know, for example, that your son is, like, the kind of kid that would love to just, um, you know, uh, go outside and, and play catch and your partner thinks that your kid wants to, um, you know... Uh, whatever, play Monopoly, and you see your kid is kind of like looking outside, then you should give that information to your partner, right? And you want to be remarrying a partner that would take this information non-defensively. That's like a key trait to remarrying with kids is you got to be with somebody nice, right? And non-defensive. So you would say in that case, you know, to your partner, like, Hey, maybe you guys could just pause on Monopoly because I think it's so nice and like, you know, Jimmy would probably want to go play catch, which you do so much better than me anyway. So why don't y'all go outside and do that? And if you're 
you know, partner isn't an idiot, he'll be like, oh, okay, Jimmy, you know, and he'll go outside and play catch with Jimmy. So especially at the beginning, over time, like in three years, you're not going to have to say this. But in the very beginning, you can facilitate much better interactions if you are free with um, the, the kind of the tips and tricks about your kids. So anyhow, hope that this gave you even a little bit of extra fun stuff that you had not thought about before that you could discuss with your partner if you're in this situation and or on the other side. Sometimes people tell me that the podcasts really make them realize what's going wrong in their situation um, and potentially stuff that they could do better. So either you have something to work on or you're kind of recognizing, whoa, things are worse than I thought. Or in some great cases, people are thinking, oh, things are better than I thought, like because I have this in the bag, like we're already doing all of this stuff. And do not underestimate that as a mood lifter. (laughs) So if I do podcasts and you're like, man, I'm fucking doing that already. Booyah, I'm a rock star. Then that's totally going to make your day. And you should share it with your partner so that you guys could pat each other on the back. And that is a bonding moment. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed and talk to you soon.